Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to this. This is going to be the last episode we're going to do of the elevator. Just tie it off, let's see if we can get the other ending. Now, the last ending we got was apparently the true ending, so this is the, the not-so-true ending. And it's going to be interesting to see how it goes, and I'm going to apologise in advance. I'm I'm feeling a bit coldy, and I'm, I'm a bit under the weather at the moment, so... <clears throat> uh, excuse me, I'm probably not going to be as good as I usually am at this, or as bad as I usually am. Your choice. Let's see how this goes. Another morning, another 20 minute ride up the elevator. I heard that this is slow even by ancient relic standards, but I have nothing to base it on, and it's not like we have any mechanics who will fix something like this up. 20 minutes is just enough for me, time for me to collect my thoughts or let my mind wander back to the past and what I remember of it. Usually it's the second one. Eleanor's here again. Of course she is. She looks like she's deep in thought. Okay, last time round we greeted her, so this time we'll leave her be. I don't have anything I really need to talk to her about and she looks pretty preoccupied. So I suppose I'll just leave the girl alone. Work is pretty slow these days, but I can't complain. It just means people aren't getting in trouble as much this week. The less dead bodies me and John have to find, the better. Sir, how was she today? He is pretty nosy, especially when there's nothing else for him to, to do but bother me about my non-existent love life. She's fine, I guess. We didn't talk today. Letting her pass you by, eh? That's the way it should be. She should mingle with guys from her own generation. You don't give yourself enough credit. And you give me too much. Anyway, jokes aside, I've got some disturbing news today. Pretty nasty stuff. What is it? The Jensen kid we found last week. He's dead. The next morning I'm waiting in the lobby for the elevator to come down to the first floor. The Jensen case floats in the forefront of my mind and I shy. Had small trouble with the cat? Eleanor. I hear the click clack of her high heels against the tile floor as she walks up to me and stands at my side. I sigh again. I wish it was as simple as that. The two of us step into the elevator together, press the buttons for our respective floors and settle in as usual. What is it? Well, I, I feel like I shouldn't ask, but what are you so upset about? But I do want to know. Why do you feel like you can't ask? Don't detectives have some sort of confidentiality agreement with their clients? It wouldn't do for me to buy. Oh, I see. That's actually a pretty legitimate concern. Ellen is a lot more thoughtful than I gave her credit for. Actually, this time I'm worried about something the whole district knows about. That murder that happened on the South Shore yesterday. Oh, that. I heard about it too. What an unfortunate incident. His family must feel awful. No doubt. And after they'd just been reunited too. United? Shit. The boy's disappearance wasn't public knowledge. Me and my big mouth. I'm never this careless, not usually. Something about this girl just lowers my guard. It must be those big, innocent eyes and how she's so easy for even an old man like me to talk to. Okay, so last time we went ahead and explained, so this time we'll cover up for ourselves. Oh, I mean, it was the first time in a while that the family had gone to the beach, right? That's what I'd heard. Oh, that's so sad. Imagine someone you love being killed while you were out relaxing together. There's a sort of awkward tension after that, so neither of us say anything more to each other before we part ways. Sir, how is Elevator Girl today? You seem awfully concerned about her, John. As usual, I suppose. Ha! You think so? It's just that I, I never see you interact much with anyone but me, so I guess I'm just happy that you're widening your horizons a little. Making small talk with someone in the elevator is considered widening your horizons these days? 
Eh, <laughs> I'll take what I can get. Is there any news on the Gentian case? No, it's only been 24 hours after all. I see. I've never seen you leave this late before. Well, normally I leave earlier, but I made a mistake at work today and it took some time to fix everything. What kind of mistake had you here this late? I miscopied some papers. Well, to be fair, I was just following orders. I ended up taking the fall for a superior's mistake. Sounds pretty rough. It's nothing compared to what you do, I'm sure. Do you usually leave this late? Something like that. I don't like leaving things half done. Ah, huh, I can believe that. You seem like the meticulous type. You think so? Sure. Once we reach the lobby, we can see the heavy rain outside. Damn, I didn't bring an umbrella. I'll see you later, detective. Try to stay dry. Thanks, Helena. You too. Well, there's a the change. We had a, a different set of options at this point, so let's plug on, shall we? I'm not sure I can keep my word on a night like this, but I make a mad, mad dash for the Sky Tram station anyway. The next day rolls around. I get the feeling I had bad dreams last night, but I don't remember them. Typical. You seem troubled today, detective. You didn't catch a cold from the rain, did you? No, nothing like that. I had some trouble sleeping, that's all. I see. Too bad. I was about to reply when I noticed that we got well past the 54th floor already. It'll be my stop soon enough. Wait, we passed your floor. What? Oh no. I know I pushed the button for my floor. I must have not used enough force. Sorry you had to wait a while longer. It's all right. I'm in no rush. Oh, looks like it's time for you to go. See you tomorrow, detective. Yeah, maybe. I step out of the elevator, not intending to say anything else. I don't want to get the girl's hopes up or anything like that. I'm just an old man. If she's interested in me and at all, she shouldn't be. Minus 100 points, Detective Carmichael. Huh. Why does that sound so familiar? I turn around just as the elevator doors start to close. What was that all about? Dave? Oh, John. Was that the elevator girl? Yeah, that's Eleanor, all right. Eleanor? Why does that name sound familiar? I've never told you about her name before? No, it just never came up, I suppose. Eleanor. Hmm, Eleanor. I wonder why John seems so fixated on her name, but I'm too tired to press the issue. Well, I'll see you later, Dave. Don't stay too late. I mean it. Good night. Be careful on your way home. You too. Come on, I'm always careful. After John leaves, I stretch my arms above my head and sigh. Today was a long day. The electricity in the office goes out, surrounding me in darkness. I feel a pain between my ribs. And then there's nothing else. Well, there we go. We got to the normal ending, which was... Yeah, I think I prefer the other one. So, there we go. That's the elevator. Um, Another visual novel by Cyanide T. I really quite like the stuff they do. Can't do the music, but um, I think what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of music on this and I will um, go through the q and I won't bother voicing it, but I will just put it up and you guys can read it and then you can see some of the thoughts that went behind this. I have to be honest, not the best murder mystery or indeed the best visual novel I've ever played, but that said, really quite enjoyed it. The characters were great, the characters were simple, and the story the story could have been more involved, there could have been much more to it, but you know, this is one of the first games they did and it's pretty good for all that. So I'm going to leave you here. 
I'll put a little bit of music up and I shall let you see the Q&A and then that's it I will be thinking of another visual novel for filling up this slot um, and well I'll probably start something next week if I can so until then I've been Simon Parsons this has been the elevator thank you and good night